You're flying along at cruising speed, something fails, and instead of bailing out, you yank a lever to deploy a parachute that catches the entire airplane. That's not a joke. In 1928, the U.S. War Department seriously tested this. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Air Park. Let's dive in. So, I was flipping through an old issue of Popular Aviation from 1928, you know, just another relaxing evening activity, and I came across this article titled, A Plane Size Parachute. And I thought, oh cool, maybe it's about big parachutes for cargo drops, like jeeps, or maybe a crate of rations or something. But nope, turns out they were seriously testing an 84-foot parachute meant to bring down an entire plane, with passengers intact. I'll be honest, my first thought was, wait, what? followed closely by, oh no, someone's gonna die. Back then, the Air Corps was part of something called the War Department, which just sounds like a place where people sit around coming up with ways to break physics. Major E.L. Hoffman, who, by the way, had just won the Collier Trophy for designing the Army's standard 24-foot parachute, decided to scale things up, like a lot. This new chute, 84 feet wide, 96 panels, 48 shroud lines, designed not for a person, but for a plane. Structurally, it was basically a regular parachute on steroids. Same silk, same dome vent, same pilot chute. Just, you know, scaled up to support a 2,000 pound aircraft and its terrified crew. They started testing this monster at Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio, using a 1,600 pound bomb as a stand-in for a small plane. And I gotta say, I really hope they told the neighbors. The parachute opened flawlessly, smooth and almost instantaneous, which sounds great, until it hit the ground and just kept going. Apparently this thing was like a giant silk tumbleweed with no interest in stopping. Winds caught it, and it started dragging the bomb clear across the field like a toddler on a sugar high. They even tried to chase it down with a car. Picture it, a 1920s sliver doing donuts across an airfield, some poor guy jumping out trying to wrestle a rogue parachute the size of a circus tent. He grabs the shroud lines, only to realize that the 600 pound weight is now chasing him. That's not test data. That's a Looney Tunes episode. So yeah, deflation was a bit of an issue. The parachute didn't want to collapse. And without a release mechanism, that 1600 pound bomb just kept skipping along the ground like the world's deadliest beach ball. But despite the mayhem, the concept worked. The reading showed 4,800 pounds of force at opening, more than double the man-sized 24-foot chute. That's some serious stopping power. But can you imagine being inside that airplane? One second you're falling, next second you stop short like an elevator catching a cable. Boom! I mean, goodbye lumbar spine. Major Hoffman wasn't discouraged. He believed in the idea so much that he wanted to see these chutes installed in all passenger planes. Easy to deploy, reliable, scalable. But there was one problem, physics. You need altitude, time, and enough structural integrity to handle the forces. Not to mention, a pilot who didn't panic and accidentally pull the release mid-flight because he thought it was a coffee tray. They were still working on a way to detach the plane from the parachute upon landing. Otherwise, you just land, then get dragged into a barn, or a tree, or Kansas. To be fair, this wasn't entirely a dead end. Decades later, ballistic recovery systems did become a thing. Some modern light aircraft, like the Cirrus SR-22, have emergency parachutes, but those are fired with rockets and use modern materials, not billowing silk and raw courage. In 1928, though, it was new territory. Wild, impractical, and ambitious in the best kind of way. You've got to admire the vision, even if you wouldn't want to be the test pilot. To be fair, the idea wasn't totally crazy. Today's ballistic parachutes, like the ones on the Cirrus aircraft, do save lives. But this 84-foot silk monster from 1928? It was a different beast. Bold, impractical, and pure aviation history gold. If this one caught you by surprise, give it a like and hit that subscribe button for more forgotten flying machines and near misses. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Air Park.